welcome. We're glad that you've joined us today for our live broadcast. We are New Hope Baptist Church, a place of hope for all people. Our goal through this experience that we will share with you today is to encourage you in every area of your life through great music and a message from the Word of Almighty God. Also, during our broadcast, we would love for you to visit our church website to get more information about our church or even to give online. Our church website is www.NewHopeChurchLife.com NewHopeChurchLife.com Again, thanks for joining us and we have an exciting service that we're about to experience together. So for five dollars, you have an opportunity to provide op to provide witness to twenty five hundred people. To me, that's a great value. God's told us in His Word in Matthew or Isaiah fifty five eleven that His Word will go forth and shall not return void. So sending God's Word is what it's about. Rebecca has done a Christmas tree and a table. So as we think about how we're going to do this during the time of pandemic. You can come and place your gift in the envelope, place it in the basket, and then Rebecca will fill out a uh, ornament and place on the tree, which will be on display during the month of November. So we have an opportunity to send God's word around the world. And I will say this, during this time of pandemic, the ministry of the Gideons has been ongoing, but we've been hampered because most of our opportunity to receive funds from other from churches and other missionary partners has been hindered because we haven't been able to go into those churches because they're not open. So this is a great need. And we have sympathy and empathy for people who are suffering from COVID. But how much more should we have for those that don't know Jesus Christ as their Savior? Because it's not about this life. It's about eternal life. So uh, I appreciate the opportunity to come and I ask you, please give that we can place God's word throughout the world. Amen. Thank you. 
Good morning. We're glad to be with you this morning and just worship the Lord with us. We have come into his house and gathered in his name to worship him. We have come into his house and gathered in his name to worship him. We have come into his house, gathered in his name to worship Christ the Lord. Worship him, Christ the Lord. Let's forget about ourselves magnify his name and worship him let's forget about ourselves magnify his name and worship him let's forget about ourselves magnify his name and worship christ the lord worship him christ the lord we have come into his house and gathered in his name to worship him. We have come into his house and gathered in his name to worship him. We have come into his house, gathered in his name to worship Christ the Lord. Worship him. Christ the Lord. Let's forget about ourselves, magnify his name and worship him. Let's forget about ourselves, magnify his name and worship him. Let's forget about ourselves, magnify his name and worship Christ the Lord. Worship him, Christ the Lord. Worship him, Christ the Lord. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful and the streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. And blessed be your name when I'm found in a desert place. Though I walk through the wilderness, blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where the streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. And blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place. Though I walk through the wilderness, blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. 
Blessed be your name. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. You give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. You give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Amen. Thank you. Oh, all right. Thank you, Sherry, for the music. And uh, Josh was in the drum pit. Thanks, Brother Buck, for a birthday for Jesus. And at this time, I want to share a message with you from the book of 1 John, chapter 2. I'm going to be in verses 7 through 12, but I am going to reference verse 1 as I get into our message this morning. And it's entitled, Go Light Your World. Jesus tells us to go. Jesus claimed that he was the light of the world, and I believe he is. I believe the scripture is true. So Jesus said to go. Jesus claimed to be the light, and Jesus says that we're to be in the world, but not of the world. So therefore, heaven waits for all Christians. But until then, we got work to do. I say this all the time. Heaven's not going to be hard. Somebody say amen. You know, everybody says they would love it to be easy. Heaven is not going to be hard. Nobody gets sick. Nobody has pain anymore. There's no more comings and going. There's no more funerals. Amen. The former things have passed, and behold, all things become new. So why do we live in this life, and I call it the grind sometimes, where you feel like you're just kind of grinding your way through? Well, Jesus said... If something is really good that awaits all of the believers, all Christians, then we're going to have to do a little bit now to make that even more worth it one day. So he tells us to go in the Great Commission. To go. It's good. You need to go to church. But you also need to go to the marketplace. The Bible says that Paul spent time in the marketplace. That means in the everyday flow where people are. You need to go to the church, go to the marketplace. You need to go home and talk to your kids. The Bible says that you're to share with your kids naturally, not, not fake, not, hey, we're going to do a religious hoot today. But as they're getting up and as they go about their day and as they go to bed, we should just be just, just naturally sharing all about how God wants to impact their lives. So Jesus said to go, Jesus claimed to be the light of the world, and Jesus told us that we are to be in this world and make a difference. Is everybody with me today? So today I want to tell you how to go and how to emulate Christ and be the light. So go and light your world, and your world is, is just for you, because your world is not my world. Where you work and where you play is different than where I work and where I play. So if we all go like our world, the world will look different. So I want to share with you 1 John chapter 2, verses 7 through 12, and then I'm going to reference verse 1. It says, Dear friends, or beloved, I am writing you a new command, but an old one, which you have had since the beginning. This old command is the message that you have heard. Yet I am writing you a new command. Its truth is seen in him. That's Jesus. 
and in you because the darkness is passing and the true light is already shining. Anyone who claims to be in the light but hates a brother or sister is still in the darkness. Anyone who loves their brother and sister lives in the light, and there is nothing in them to make them stumble. But anyone who hates a brother or sister in the darkness and walks around in the darkness, they do not know where they are going because the darkness has blinded them. Now, this whole passage is about this new command that is an old command, but it's all about living in Christ so that we live in the light so we can love. So let me unpack this, but, but verse 1, it's really important to get verse 1 because this is amazing to me. It says, my dear children, I write this to you so that you, and, and dear children is also a reference to the church, I write this to you that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have an advocate, which is the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. Now, I want to start with that in just a second, but it says, if we sin, we have an advocate. Now, let me, let me get to that in just a second, but I want, to, I want to open with this. If you're listening to me today at home and you've ever heard this song, I want you to slap your neighbor at home. And it's Whitney Houston, The Greatest Love of All. That's the name of the song, The Greatest Love of All. And I love what Whitney Houston sings about, the greatest love of all, because she's talking about the greatest person you need to learn to love is you. Because Jesus said, if you will love you, you will love others. Because we're to love others as we love us, ourselves. So we're to love God first and then love others, but you can only love others if you learn to love you. So the greatest thing is when you learn to love yourself. Loving God first and then loving yourself. In that song, it says that, and she's talking about the young people, but she says, show them the beauty they possess inside. Did you know that everybody at the sound of my voice has something beautiful on the inside of you? And God is the most beautiful person you will ever invite to indwell you in the person of his spirit. But when God gets in your life, you have some beauty inside of you that you possess, that maybe you don't even know what you are capable of. And so I want you to know today that if Christ is in you, and we say this here at New Hope, the hope of glory. Now think about this. If Christ is in you and he is the hope of glory, hope, confidence, the hope of glory. Glory is talking about heaven, but also the Shekinah glory, which means when God does great things here, so there's glory to be revealed later, but there's also glory here, right? The hope of glory, if it's in you, if Jesus is in you, then he in you and you in the world becomes the solution. Amen? So now, go light your world. Think about it. If you go and he in you into the world, the world will look different. Verse 1 said it like this. It said, if you sin, you have an advocate. This is amazing. Because, I don't know about you guys, but before I got saved, I sinned a lot. And didn't even have a conscience. Let's just be honest. And when I got saved, I still sinned a lot, and I've learned to sin less, because the Holy Spirit works in us. But I love the fact that it doesn't say when you sin, it says if you sin. So that tells me that the power of sin has been defeated. Did y'all hear that? What, it, what, what it's saying is you don't have to wake up and be addicted to a bottle or to a pill or to a job or to your money. It's saying that when Christ came, the, the, the power of sin was canceled. Not the reality of it. We live in a sin-fallen world. The reality of sin is real. But he's saying that if, that means it is possible because if means it is possible that I cannot sin. It's amazing to me that there are things that I used to do that were sinful that now I don't do anymore or I do less of because of God living in me telling me it's wrong. Is that not amazing to you that are listening to me today? That, that the power of sin over your life. Listen, y'all hadn't heard what I said because if you listen to me, a lot of times we see the guy that's laying under the bridge and his life that we think has gone nowhere and, and, and he has nothing. Do you realize we were all two decisions away from being under a bridge at some point in our life? I don't care who you are. I don't care how clean your background is. 
You are capable of your life spinning out of control because of sin. And the fact that, he, that, that John even said, if you sin, which means the power of sin has been canceled. That means you have the ability to wake up with the person power of the Holy Spirit and say, I will say yes to Christ today, and I have the ability to not get mad when traffic is going slow and flip them off. Now, I didn't say you don't flip them off sometimes, but I said you have the ability through the power of God working in you to not do that. Amen? If you sin. Now, this is the beauty. Because man's greatest need is not a paycheck. It's not your 401k. It's not a great retirement. Man's greatest need is to have your sins forgiven. Now, hear me. Because when your sins are forgiven, okay, your whole life has the ability to move in the direction of where God will want you to go, which is to go light your world. Amen? Now, now I need you to understand this. Because the greatest need of man, I'm talking about men, women, boys, and girls, is that, that our sins are forgiven. And it says that Jesus is our advocate. I love that. Because an advocate fights for you. They're not against you. Let me put it in these legalistic terms. You commit a crime and go get you an advocate. See how much money it'll cost you. <laughs> Y'all didn't hear what I just said. A good advocate in a courtroom will cost you a lot of money. If you don't believe me, call OJ. <laughs> he had the dream team, they called it. And you ought to see how much he paid for the dream team. An advocate or a team or a group of advocates. So, so if an advocate costs a lot monetarily, think about this. The Bible says, not when you sin, but if you sin. God gave us an advocate. So the price of my advocate was the life of Jesus on a cross that I didn't pay a dime for. Y'all ever thought about that? Go, go, go hire you an advocate. You'll be in debt unless you're really rich already, all right? But the greatest need that we all have is our sins are to be forgiven, right? And the advocate that God said, I will send Jesus, for God so loved the world, he sent Jesus to be the advocate, so that if we sin, we have the ability for our sins to be forgiven. This same writer said, if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive all unrighteousness. Amen? So today, as you're listening to me, I want you to know that your greatest need is for Jesus to forgive your sins. Because, let me tell you why. I love what he says here in verse 7. Dear friends, beloved, he's writing to the church. When a person's sins are forgiven, listen, three things happen. Change a heart, you change a life. I'm telling you. Because the Bible says when your sins are forgiven, the Holy Spirit, in Jesus, the Bible says you went from having a stony heart that God couldn't work in to a heart that becomes pliable. So you, you, you get somebody's heart changed to where they're open to instruction and wisdom from God and guidance from the Holy Spirit. You change a heart, you change a life. Amen? And you can do any nine step, 14 step, seven step, three step, not against those programs, by the way, but you really want to see a life changed let somebody's sins be forgiven by the one and only Jesus Christ. Change your heart, change your life. Amen. Change your heart, you provide direction. People say, I don't know where I'm going. How can I go light the world because I feel like I'm struggling and I, I just don't feel like I have the light. Well, let me tell you something. He is the light and he lives in you. If your sins have been forgiven, he tells you to go do what he did. I'm going to share with that at the end in just a second. Go do what he did in the world and it'll light the world. Go do what he did. You change a heart, it'll provide direction. You'll know where to go. I'm, I'm, I'm going to answer that question at the very end just a second. You change a heart, you know what else I find about a heart change? People have more courage. They'll have more courage. You go through the Bible and you say, how in the world did David face Goliath? How in the world did Daniel sit in that den of lions? How in the world did Peter, all right, how did, he, how did he stand up? Right, Y'all, do you realize that Peter had just denounced Jesus? And then all of a sudden, 
he's in that place and the Holy Spirit comes upon him and he gives the greatest sermon probably ever preached in the Bible. That same Peter that had just messed up. Amen? I say that because with Christ you have courage. Change your heart, find courage. Let me give you this backdrop and then I want to give you what to take home so you know how to go and light your world. The scripture tells us here, I love it, it says, I'm writing you a new command. He says, yet it's an old command or an old truth. What's he saying? The church that first John, that, that John's writing to here is a Gentile church. Now, if you're not a Jew, you're a Gentile. Amen? And the Gentiles did not have the luxury of the Old Testament command that was given to the Jewish nation to go love God with all your heart, mind, soul, strength. So the new command starts at the gospel, and the gospel is the gospel of grace, and that's Jesus Christ. So when you hear a new command, it means that the beginning of hope for a Gentile was the gospel of Jesus Christ because they didn't have the old covenant. You follow me? That's why Peter said in Acts, I now realize that God loves those Gentiles. Remember when he showed him the vision and he thought God only loves, come on, right? So I'm saying this to say, this new command is an old command revamped under a new covenant. Now, why do I tell you that? This is what I want to leave you with. This is really cool. All right? I want, to I want you to take this home today. In the Old Testament, in the Old Testament, the qualifier was love God with all of your everything and he will bless you. That was, the, that was the qualifier. The other qualifier was, if you don't love him and obey him, he'll do what? He'll bring judgment, right? The New Testament, the new command that is given here is simple, and it is so neat. The qualifier in the New Testament is the life of Jesus Christ. So, so here it is. In the Old Testament, we are told to love so that we stay in the light, all right? But it's not using that verbiage. In the New Testament, what we read today we are told, we are told based on Jesus, instead of we are just told to love, we are shown what love looks like. Did y'all hear that? In the New Testament, the qualifier is the life of Christ. We are shown how to love so we can then live in love, live in light and model that to the world. That's pretty cool. So the qualifier in the New Testament is the life of Jesus Christ. And for the Gentile... You better be glad there's a new covenant, a new command, because the new, I'm going to tell you something, it would have been hard, some of y'all are going, but some people have the old and the new, yeah, but it would have been hard to live up to that old covenant stuff. If you don't believe me, spend time reading all the things they had to do. Over a thousand do's and don'ts, amen? For the legalistic people in the crowd, you'd have loved it. For everybody else, we'd have fallen way short, Amen? But the qualifier to living in the light and going and lighting your world is the life of Jesus. So I said, change your heart, you provide direction. So I want you to think about this. Jesus, Jesus Christ is the qualifier for what love looks like. Amen? And Jesus said, come follow me. What do we follow him to do to go light our world? To be as he is in the world. So when you go, you follow the example of how to love. What does it mean to love and what did Jesus do? He sought the welfare of everybody ahead of himself. If you want to show God's love, all right, because when a heart is changed, you have direction. So you're saved going, how do I go light my world? You seek the general welfare of somebody else today and tomorrow and the next day, and you'll find fulfillment in this life. But if you wake up and go, it's all about me, 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 me. I want this, I want that, I want that. You're going to live a miserable life. So what Jesus says is, I am the qualifier, and I show this unconditional love. So how does that look in the world so I can go light my world? Today, I dare you to think about somebody else, to do something for somebody else. Put yourself on the back burner or do something for somebody else. And you will receive immense, immense joy. What else did Jesus do? And then I want to close with a challenge. He gave dignity, intrinsic value. Do you remember what the times were like in the Bible? Rome 
had the power and Rome had a slave population. They were a slave culture. That meant if you were a white, healthy man, you were in good shape. But everybody else, and you were one string of bad luck away from becoming a slave, which meant you had no rights. So if you're a white, healthy man listening to me today, you go, that sounds good. Well, get injured real quick. As soon as you get injured, you're out of that category. Y'all follow me? So why am I telling you that? In a slave culture, your value was only monetarily. Your, your, money, your, your, your money, literally, where you put your money, your, your mouth, your value only, it, it just literally was about ha what you meant to the economy. And Jesus comes along, and that's why I couldn't stand him. And he said, men, women, boys, and girls, you have intrinsic worth. You have value. You are not what you do. You happen to do what you do. You are loved by me. And I tell people all the time, if you're a Christian, you're a full-time servant of God. You are not a full-time pastor, deacon, Sunday school teacher, basketball coach, lawyer, banker. You're a full-time servant of God who happens to pastor, happens to be a Sunday school teacher, happens to be a banker, happens to be a lawyer, happens to be a basketball coach. Because one day that title is going to be gone. And guess what? You're still going to be a servant of God. Amen? That's what James said. So what am I saying? Jesus came to show love, which is he thought about others. He did for others. But he also came to make sure that just because you're breathing today, you know that you have intrinsic value. You have worth. You have value. You have meaning. Your, your life. You, listen. He wouldn't have told you to go be the light of the world if you couldn't do it. He, he, he told you to do it because you can do it with him. You can live. And you know what? It's as simple as loving others. Because it says, the more you love, the brighter your world looks. But the more you hate, the darker your world looks. It's just that simple. And Jesus said, you're going to know who's mine by one, one, one verb. Love, because love's a verb an action do they love do they love do they love if, it, if it's not if it's not put in play then everything else is irrelevant sherry come on and play i want to i want to ask you this question i'm gonna close and pray john i love this writing because in verse one he says my dear children he's talking about the church that's a reference he used dear friends or beloved and he keeps it so simple. And he says, listen, if you're going to go and you're going to make a difference, you're going to light your world, you've got to let go. You've got to let go of hate, and bitterness, and animosity. It's amazing how many people I run into that will say, I don't like this group of people or this segment of population because they stand for this or they did this. That has nothing to do with the way you should love people. You should be able to, if you're a Republican, you ought to love every Democrat, and Democrats ought to love Republicans. If, po if politics makes you hate each other, then God help us. If the color of our skin makes us hate, listen, you ought to be able to disagree and still love each other. You ought to be able to look different and love each other. I have never walked in and said to my wife, because you're a woman, I just can't stand you because I'm a man. That's about how much sense it makes to say if I'm a Republican or I'm a Democrat or if I'm a Libertarian or if I'm blah, 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 I just can't love that. Listen, you're going to have a tough time in heaven because in heaven there's going to be Democrats and Republicans and Libertarians. There's going to be white and black and Native American. There's going to be Hispanic, Latino. There's going to be poor people and middle class. You're not going to know any of that, thank goodness. But life is really simple. We're going to be a light. We've got to do what Jesus did, and that is seek the general welfare of other people and give people value. So here's how I close. And I want you to think about this. This is a heavy question, and, and I'm not even going to give an invitation. This is just a question that I have to ask myself every day, and I hope I can give the right answer. If I am supposed to go and light my world, it starts at home. That's my first place. And then I go to my job. And then I go into Roses or Nick's Pick or all the different places throughout the day, wherever I go. Amen? I train kids on a basketball court, those kind of things. If I'm to go and light my world, here's, 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 what I, here's the question I think is very heavy, and it's all based on living in the light. 
If Jesus came to seek the welfare of others and to provide intrinsic value, dignity, to every man, woman, boy, and girl, does my life add value to others? You ever thought about that? Does my presence, does my life, does my influence, does my being around you add value to your life? Can I tell you something? We're either adding value or we're hurting. We're hurting the places we go. And God help us all because if we're going to be the light and live in love and make a difference in our world, wherever you go, the way you can break that down and have a metrics is when I walk into the room, when I go into those meetings, when I'm praying at home with my kids, when I'm doing the things that I do, are people happy to see me coming? Are they excited that here comes that one? Or are they going, oh, Lord, I got to deal with this for five, six, six minutes. Right? We, we don't live in the world of visitation anymore. I understand that. Not just a COVID. We just kind of live in a fast-paced world. But I always give this analogy. You show up at somebody's house, and, and I just follow the illustration. I'm going to pray. Follow up at somebody's house, and, and listen. They don't, not only they don't come to the door, but they keep talking and don't even pull the blinds down. <laughs> they want you to know they're in the house and just don't want to come answer the door. I don't want to be that guy. I, I, I don't want to walk in the room and people say, here comes the burden. Here comes the one that's going to add stress. Here's the cr hypercritical. Can I tell you something? Critical people don't love themselves. Amen? It goes back to learning how to love yourself and knowing there's great purpose in you. I don't want to be that guy. I, I don't want to be the extra stress, the burdens. Life is, is, is hard enough without me adding more to it. So as you close today, I want you just to take that home with you. Think about it. Do you add value to others? Does your life add value to others? Does your influence add value to others? Are others excited to see you coming? Or are they just so excited that you're on your way back home? It's something for us all to think about as we go light our world. Father, thank you so much for the challenge of your word. The challenge of your word is that we're to simply be the hands and feet of a God who loves this world. And I don't have to agree with the way they think or the way they live. But at the same time, I can sure love the person, find common ground, and still point them to the hope of glory, which is and will always be Christ Jesus, where there is forgiveness. And when people are forgiven, a changed heart is a changed life. A changed heart provides direction. And a changed heart provides the courage to love like Jesus loved so we can truly go light our world. Thank you so much for what you've done for us. We can never repay you or thank you enough. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. We will see you back Wednesday night for our next live stream. Thanks again for everybody that helped with Trunk or Treat. Christmas drive through will be here soon. So y'all uh, tune in to the next big event here at New Hope. Have a great day.